Hi everyone, uh, this is Wissam Zakhoud. Uh, I'm a um, PhD student and a research assistant at the Department of Information Systems and Analytics. It's my pleasure today to present my paper under the title, The Use of Crash Model to Create Adaptive Practices and E-Learning Systems. Uh, since um, uh, I know that uh, a lot of people are not maybe um, that familiar with the concept of fresh models or fresh analysis. I will give um, first uh, a, a short introduction, a brief introduction about what is rash analysis. Basically, rash analysis is a psychometric technique that is used to compute uh, performances of respondents um, to tests or questionnaires or surveys or exams. Uh, the idea here is that the rash analysis can be used to analyze the scores uh, of exams or surveys uh, by trading off the students' abilities against the difficulty levels of the questions. So um, the, the rash analysis will uh, give us what we call it uh, the rash model that presents the students' abilities and the questions' difficulty levels uh, on the same scale of the relevant ability. Uh, and this is a very important point. Uh, by presenting, actually, by presenting the uh, students' abilities and the questions' difficulty levels on the same scale, um, this makes things uh, easier for us to visualize such models using uh, right maps that looks like um, uh, this map we can see here. Uh, in a right map like this one, uh, we have the list of the students, we have the list of the questions, and these lists are ordered, for example, for students here, based on the, uh, the ability of the students. The, uh, more April students can be found uh, near the top. Less April students uh, can be found near the bottom. Also the questions, the more difficult questions can be found near the top and the less difficult questions can be found near the bottom. So basically this is the idea of behind the, the rash analysis, rash models and the right maps. Uh, rush models uh, or rush analysis are widely used in different fields, especially in education, uh, because they are typically used there to um, analyze students' results and tests and exams. Uh, sometimes also we can use rush analysis to uh, construct and validate uh, new measurement instruments. If you are developing a new survey or a new test, maybe uh, you can use rush analysis to analyze uh, such uh, survey or tests. Um, to uh, see what kind of questions uh, you have, the difficulty of these questions, how difficult are they, um, 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 how students are uh, responding to such questions, etc. Uh, in addition, um, uh, branch analysis is widely used to create adaptive uh, computer adaptive tests, the CATS. Uh, the idea behind computer adaptive tests is that we, uh, instead of giving the, uh, the, 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 the student too many questions to uh, measure his ability, uh, we can give uh, the student uh, adaptive tests um, like this. Um, uh, be according to this technique, for example, we can give a student uh, a question uh, that we know in advance after using the rational analysis, we know the difficulty level of this question. If the student managed to answer this question correctly, we can give the student a question, another question that is more difficult. Uh, if the student fails in this question, for example, we can uh, go ahead and give the student uh, another question that's a little bit easier. If the student passed this question, we can give the student uh, another question that is a little bit more difficult, so on and so forth. Uh, the, the, this technique will converge uh, quickly into a question that, into questions that um, uh, comparable to the ability of the learner or at the, le at the ability level of the, the, the student taking the test. Okay, so basically these are the, the common uh, uses for uh, rush analysis in education. Um, however, um, we, we are thinking about using rush analysis for another purpose or another field, which is uh, to create adaptive practices. Uh, in fact, if we um, review the literature, look at the literature, uh, we can find that there are many techniques uh, already used to create adaptive practices. Uh, in um, e-learning systems. Uh, these techniques include um, uh, overlay models, include uh, Bayesian networks, include um, um, constraint-based uh, constraint models, CBMs, includes um, uh, different machine learning techniques, so on. Uh, so basically, 
these are different techniques that are already used. However, if we look at into literature, uh, we uh, hardly would find anything related to use um, to use um, uh, rash analysis or rash models to create uh, adaptive practices. Uh, on the other hand, we believe that rash analysis are very powerful tools, very powerful techniques, and they have a great potential to be used in creating adaptive content and adaptive training materials and adaptive uh, practices. For this purpose, um, we think we can we can use a rash analysis in this field. Um, the, 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 the general idea behind uh, adaptive practices is that we want to create practices that enhance learners' abilities uh, by focusing only on the learner's weaknesses instead of giving the student or the learner um, all kinds of questions that we have in our question bank, uh, which is a time-consuming and uh, um, time-wasting uh, approach. Um, it is better to give the student only questions that address the exact weaknesses of this learner uh, while avoiding any irrelevant questions for this learner. So for this, uh, taking that in consideration, we uh, suggest or we propose um, to use a rash models to create computer adaptive practices that um, um, uh, give learners questions from a question bank while taking into consideration uh, not only the learner's ability, but also the question's difficulty levels into consideration. And this is the strength of rash analysis because it, 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 it measures the, the learner's ability on one hand and measures the difficulty levels of the questions on the other hand. So uh, the novel algorithm that we propose and present in this paper um, can be used to create CAPS, the computer adaptive practices, uh, by determining for each student the training questions that this student needs. Um, basically, these questions would be the, 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 the questions with difficulty level that is around and above the student's estimated ability. This is the idea because we, there, there, there is no point actually in giving the student questions that are far below his ability, questions that are too easy for the student. Uh, so, if, if uh, to visualize things and making them easier, maybe uh, if we have, for example, this right map, we want to create adaptive practices for uh, student number 19. Uh, there is no point in giving this student questions that are too easy for him. Instead, we may decide to give this student questions that, like uh, question I-14, I-15, I-14, and 15, they are at his um, level and question, other questions that are above the level of this, the, this student. So he can be uh, trained and he can practice questions that are uh, equal or above his ability, uh, to enhance his ability. This is the idea. Uh, the procedure code here presents the general idea here, is that uh, for each ability uh, B, for student I, B, I, and for each uh, difficulty level uh, for question J, D, J, uh, we will check whether uh, if the DJ, uh, the difficulty level of question is above or equal to the ability of this student, in this case, we will add this a question uh, to the list of question types that the student needs. Um, the, the, this graph shows the, 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 the algorithm that we propose here. So basically, if we have a list of students, uh, we can give them a pretest. Based on the scores from this pretest or initial test, uh, we can um, um, administer rash analysis to generate the students' um, abilities, uh, measures, and the questions difficulty levels. And then we can apply the CEDU code that I just illustrated uh, to determine and find out the question types uh, that are required uh, for uh, question types with difficulty levels that are required. For each student, the list of these questions types for, determined for each student can help us to generate a personalized training quiz for each student, where we choose only the relevant questions from the question bank for each student, and then we can uh, give the adaptive quiz for the student. Uh, we have here two options after the student takes um, after the student takes his adaptive quiz. We can either uh, generate a new personalized uh, training quiz for this student. Or maybe if we want to complicate things a little bit, uh, we can take the scores from this adaptive quiz back to um, um, recalculate the rash uh, model again 
and to uh, attune the, the values and the measures for students' abilities and the question difficulty levels. And repeat the process again. Okay, um, uh, th th there is uh, also um, other options for us to customize our um, algorithm. Uh, for example, uh, let's say we are trying to um, generate questions adaptively for uh, student 19. As we listed earlier, we can give students questions that are uh, equal with difficulty level uh, that uh, that is equal or above the ability of this uh, student, as we can see here. Um, and instead, uh, another option is to give a student, let's say a student 19 here, questions that are only above his ability. So in this in this scenario, we will not give the student questions uh, equal to the, uh, with difficulty level equal to the ability of the student, like question 14 or 15. And instead, we will give only questions that are above the learner's ability to practice. Um, another option is that maybe we can go below the ability of the student to some extent. So in this case, uh, student 19 will not only be given questions uh, that are equal or above his ability, but also some questions that are below his ability to some extent, let's say one logic below his ability. We have the options uh, here to customize our um, adaptive practices in the way that we wish. Okay, uh, what are the advantages of this approach? Um, um, there are different advantages. One of them is that our approach here that we, we present with this algorithm and this technique uh, is least tied to the students' answers in the pretest. Um, if we think uh, in, um, about a very simple uh, adaptive practices algorithm, it will basically um, give a student um, questions that are similar to the questions that he answered incorrectly in, in, in his previous attempts. So if he did a mistake in the past, maybe we should give a student more questions for the same time to practice in the future. This is too simple approach. However, in, in, in our approach that we are presenting here, uh, we are not taking only um, the, the, the student performance in the past into consideration, but also we, uh, we take uh, both the student's ability and the overall difficulty of the questions into consideration. And the strength with this uh, feature is that uh, it can um, mitigate the effects that comes from the fact that sometimes students may happen that they answer very difficult questions above their levels uh, just by pure chance, just by chance, just by by uh, by guessing. Uh, also, it can mitigate the, the situation where students may answer uh, very easy questions incorrectly because um, out of carelessness, for example, or un unintentionally. So these things are common and they happen. Uh, however, uh, our approach can mitigate the, 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 this problem uh, because uh, our approach does not uh, depend uh, merely on the previous attempts and the previous performance of the student, but also it, 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 it takes into consideration essentially the overall difficulty of the question, the overall difficulty of the questions uh, given in the test. Another feature for the, uh, another advantage for this approach is that it offers better learning experience um, for the learner because uh, it saves time. Uh, the, the, the learner would not waste time uh, and effort taking quizzes that he doesn't need. Questions, uh, taking questions, for example, that are too easy for him. Um, the, 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 this approach also, uh, we think uh, this algorithm would require lower computational costs, especially when compared to machine learning approach and Bayesian uh, networks that, uh, that are very expensive when it comes to computational costs. Um, this approach that we propose here with this algorithm does not require large training deficits. And this, this is a very important point, especially when compared to machine learning. Machine learning techniques are very powerful. However, they require to work properly, they need uh, quite big uh, or large uh, training deficits. However, uh, with uh, rationalists, we, we can apply our algorithm even with very small deficits. Even one, one class will, will be enough. Of just typical classroom uh, will be enough to apply our algorithm. Um, uh, besides everything, we, we another advantage for our uh, for our approach is that the outcomes from our algorithm are um, easy to understand by teachers. Teachers just can uh, it's very transparent uh, algorithm actually. You can just look at the, the right map and tell why this algorithm proposed or suggested a specific set of questions 
to a specific student. Um, this is not the case, for example, if, you're, if we are talking about machine learning, where, where the outcomes from machine learning uh, algorithm um, could be very difficult to interpret or to understand why the algorithm such such set of questions for a specific student. In many cases, this is the case. Okay, uh, to um, evaluate our um, uh, algorithm, we develop an online learning program um, to teach primary five students the skills that they need to be fluent in dealing with uh, presentations. Um, I mean representations like line charts, bar charts, tables, sketches, different kind of representations that you can find in science and math books. Okay, and um, in, in, in this experiment uh, conducted here in a school, primary school here in Singapore, the students uh, begin by taking uh, a breed test to uh, measure their uh, ability, and scores from this breed test can be used and, uh, and would be. Um, analyzed uh, using the rash analysis to measure the, um, the students' abilities and the difficulty of the questions. Afterwards, the students will take uh, 10 online lessons uh, to learn about how to deal with the different representations. And then uh, we will split, uh, we, we, we split actually students into two groups, treatment group, 57 students. They were given adaptive practices according to our algorithm. Another 59 students uh, are considered a control group. They were given uh, questions chosen randomly from the um, chosen randomly by the system from the question bank. At the end, the students were given um, a post test uh, so that um, we can compare their performance. Uh, before and after the treatment. At this stage, we are still um, analyzing the data outcomes from this experiment. Um, this, these are some screenshots from our program. So we have this, this screen about the login. Um, the, these are the four tasks within our system that begins with the initial assessment, the, the, the lessons, the practices, either adaptive or random questions and finally the final assistant the the, the posters these are the the, the 10 lessons um the student uh, has to take one by one and finally uh the student can take practice questions uh, the, the, this is what the practice uh, practice question or quiz looks like um, so basically uh this is the idea of our uh, research uh, the contributions and conclusions. Here, um, first, we 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 um, uh, believe that rush analysis is a very powerful technique, uh, and um, it has a very good potential to be exploited and be used in the field of creating adaptive practices. Uh, the novel approach uh, that we are presenting here with our algorithm can be a good contribution not only for learners but also for practitioners developing e-learning systems. Um, the algorithm we propose here also can be uh, superior to existing approaches um, in some contexts. Um, however, the, 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 there is one limitation here that we want uh, to emphasize is that um, there is a strict condition when you, we want to apply or to use rational analysis, um, uh, the condition of unidimensionality. Unidimensionality in the sense of that um, the sense that uh, the test or the exam that we are analyzing should be a unidimensional, uh, measuring one um, specific uh, skill or competence, or at least this uh, this exam or test should uh, uh, we should be able to approximately uh, make it unidimensional. It can't be approximately considered unidimensional. Otherwise, we can't apply or use the, the rational analysis. So this is my 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 paper and my presentation, um, and I'm happy to receive any questions. Thank you for listening.